Hi friends, Caitlin here with Sass and Stitch Crochet and today I'll be walking you through a tutorial for the honeycomb stitch pattern. This stitch pattern would be perfect for the experienced beginner, someone who's looking for a step up in crochet stitch experience. It provides tons of texture and I can't wait to show you. I'm going to be using DK weight yarn and a five millimeter crochet hook. Now this stitch, I tend to find that it's pretty tight, so I like to size up my crochet hook from what I would usually use with that weight yarn. So again, you can use any weight yarn, but I would recommend sizing up one or two hook sizes from the size you would usually use with that yarn. For example, with DK weight, I would usually use a four or a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook, but I'm gonna use a five millimeter for this stitch. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We'll be starting off with a slip knot. Insert your hook into your slip knot, and we'll be making a starting chain of any odd number. I'm going to do 19 chains. So yarn over, pull that loop through the loop on your hook. That's how you make a chain. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook. Continue until you have an odd number of chains. All right, I have my 19 chains. And for the first row, we're gonna be single crocheting in every chain across. So you're gonna be starting in the second chain from the hook, and it's best for the stitch to work into the back bumps of each chain, so not the front like you see here, you want to turn it over and find that back bump. So starting again in the second chain from the hook, you'll insert your hook into that back bump, yarn over and pull through one loop on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. That's a single crochet and you'll be doing that in each chain across. Find the next back bump, insert, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two. Continue single crocheting all the way across your starting chain and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. Okay, I've got my row of all single crochet and at the end of the row, I'll chain one and turn my work and for this next row, row two, we're gonna start off with just a single crochet in the first stitch. Now we'll have to change things up a bit as we get into the stitch pattern. So we're looking at the back of the work currently with row two, and we're gonna be starting to make these spike stitches, these long, long stitches that you see. We'll be working into rows below to create this spike stitch effect. So for row two, Instead of working into the top of this next stitch here, we're gonna work down into the starting chain instead. So insert your hook down into the starting chain, yarn over and pull through one. And now you wanna lift up a little bit on that stitch so it's the proper height. Yarn over and pull through two. So you're just working a single crochet, but it's a single crochet spike down below. Now we covered over that stitch that was on the top here. So we're gonna skip that and we're gonna just work right into the next stitch with a single crochet. We're gonna do a spike stitch again down into the starting chain. Insert, yarn over and pull through. Pull up on your loop, yarn over and pull through two. You'll continue repeating this stitch pattern all the way across by alternating between doing a single crochet and a spike stitch down into the starting chain. Go ahead and keep working this row and I'll meet you back at the end of it. Okay, catching you up to where I'm at, I've done a spike stitch and a single crochet. Now I'm gonna be ending with a spike stitch in the last stitch. So with the honeycomb stitch, we're gonna be working the stitch pattern all the way up, even through the last stitch. Now we will chain one, 
and turn our work. And now we're going to be working the front side of the work. This is going to create the honeycomb stitch pattern that you see on my sample swatch here. So we'll have these spike stitches. Um, looking back at the previous row again for a second, you see the spike stitches that have the longer legs. We can kind of see those longer legs on the front side here as well. So what we're going to be doing is these V's that you see in the stitch of the spike stitch. So right at the top here, we're, we'll be working single crochets. And then in between the V's, instead of working into the top here, we'll be picking up this leg of the previous V and this leg of the next V and crocheting them together to form the honeycomb stitch effect. So let's walk through it together from the beginning of the row. So we have a spike stitch in the first spot here. So we're just gonna be doing a single crochet right into the top. Now the next stitch is between two spike stitches. So this means we need to pick up the last leg of the previous spike stitch, this longer leg here, and the first leg of the next spike stitch. And we'll be single crocheting them together. So yarn over, pull through both of those loops, yarn over and pull through two. Now we're at the top of a spike stitch, which is this V here. So we'll be doing just a regular single crochet into the top. And now we'll be between V's again, these two V's. So we're going to pick up the last leg of the previous V and the first leg of the next V. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. Continue repeating this stitch pattern across by doing a single crochet and then the single crochet two together with the legs of the V stitches. One more time for you, we'll do a single crochet and then single crochet two together by picking up those legs. Continue working and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. All right, I'm at the end of my row here. I just did a single crochet two together. So next is a single crochet. And then next we would usually have a single crochet two together, but we don't have a V on the end here. Um, but to continue the stitch pattern, we're gonna kind of just create a V. So let's pick up this leg from the previous V and then find this leg at the very end of your work on the edge. It's just a regular single crochet, but we're gonna work into it and pretend like it's a V and do your single crochet two together like you have been. This just helps extend the stitch pattern so you don't get an awkward edging on the end. Chain one and turn your work. And now we'll be working again on the back of the work. These spike stitches will become much more pronounced now that we're a couple rows into our swatch now. Okay, for starting row four, we'll be starting with a spike stitch down two rows down from where we should be working. So one, that's one row, two rows. And there'll be just a little hole that you can insert to. While you do this, you wanna look at the front of the work and find this upside down V from the front side. And you wanna make sure your hook goes right in between that V. Yarn over and pull through the work. And remember, you need to pull up on your loop back to the current height. Yarn over and pull through two. Next, we'll do a single crochet. And now we'll do another spike stitch. We're gonna be working down two rows below, one, two. It can be a little hard to tell where to insert from the back side, but again, once you insert, Look to the front side and you'll be inserting right between the two legs of the V that you see. 
Yarn over and pull through and pull up to the current height of the row. Yarn over and pull through two. Continue repeating this stitch pattern across. So again, that's a single crochet and then a spike stitch worked two rows below into that hole. Again, confirming you're going through the V. Yarn over and pull through the work. Pull up. Yarn over and pull through two. Continue working this stitch pattern across the row and I'll meet you back at the end. Okay, I'm at the end of row four. I've just worked a spike stitch. So in the last stitch, I'll do just a regular single crochet. And now you can tell that these spikes are much more prominent. This is how your work will look for the remainder of the stitch. Now we're gonna chain one and turn, and now we're working back on the front. And this is gonna be the same thing that we've done before. Each row is just going to be starting off a little bit differently because it's an offset pattern. So you see how we have this V stitch here. That means we would put a single crochet in the top of that V, which means in the first stitch, we would need to do a single crochet two together. Again, kind of like the end on the other row, we're gonna create a V by inserting into a leg on the very edge and then inserting into the first leg of the next V. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. So we just kind of created an extra leg there. Single crochet in the next stitch. And then this part you're already familiar with, pick up the last leg and the first leg of the next one. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. And then single crochet in the next. Continue repeating this stitch pattern all the way across, and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. All right, I'm at the other end of my work. I've just worked a single crochet. So now I will do a single crochet two together, and a single crochet in the last stitch. And now we can really see this stitch pattern starting to form. The rest of the stitch pattern is just simply repeating rows two through five. At this point, the rest of the stitch is just repeating rows two through five as many times as you would like until you reach your desired size. So you can do the rest of it on your own, but I'm gonna give you just a few more tips for how to identify what row you're on when you're starting. So when you're looking at the back side, if there's no upside down V in the very first spot, you see here there's no V right here first, it's a one stitch over. So that means you're just gonna be starting with a single crochet. Now in the next stitch, we do have that upside down V that our hook needs to insert through. So we're ready to do a spike stitch. The spike stitches are always gonna be just to the left, or if you're left-handed, they'll be just to the right, just to the left of the previous spike stitch. That will help you take out a little bit of the guesswork every single time you do it. Single crochet, another spike stitch just to the left and through the middle on the front. I'm crocheting fast and not showing you it very well just because I want to show you the starts and the ends of the rows a couple more times just so you can help identify where you are a little better. When you're at the end of rows, let's see, I just did a spike so I need to do a single crochet. And remember at the end we also end with spike stitches sometimes if it's appropriate on that row. So you do it into the very last stitch you always chain one and turn at the end of your rows. Now when you're looking at the front, if you have a V right here at the beginning, then you start with a single crochet. 
and then you can continue on with your single crochet two together. So hopefully you're able to confidently identify what row you're on and what stitch you need to start with because it is an offset pattern. So every row is gonna be starting a little bit different. So that is the honeycomb stitch. I hope you enjoyed learning this stitch. I know I was absolutely thrilled when I first learned this because it's just such a unique texture that you don't usually get with traditional crochet stitches. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial, if it was helpful for you, and let me know what you would want to make with this stitch pattern, and it might inspire me for a future pattern design. I also just love that the back of this stitch has such a pretty texture as well. It's so different, but I love that it's kind of reversible. Keep a lookout on my channel because I have some patterns planned with this stitch pattern, and they will be free on YouTube. So keep an eye out, subscribe, and I hope you have a great day.